what the hell is wrong with this? Bear with me while I set up my stream thing here, which is just being really crazy tonight for some reason. <coughs> I don't know if I'm going to play another game tonight later or not. I got one more day of work, one more night of work. What's this music sound like? That can go there. That can go there. <laughs> Let me, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use an example. So, when you, whoopsie daisy, when you play a game, when you play a chess game, when you play all kinds of chess games, you have what's called a strategy, you've got a plan, your strategy is okay, I'm going to be a good middle game player and I'm going to do all kinds of tactics and win in the middle game because... I don't know how to play the end game. Or I don't want to play the end game. I want to keep all my major pieces on the board and use tactics and beat the crap out of my opponent in the middle game. Now, that's good for like chess ratings have, or chess ratings have like. Class E, which is a beginning class. <laughs> and it goes to Class D. Class C, like Class C players, you know, that's getting into more tactics. Class B and A players, they're all about tactics. Um, when you get into Class A and the master players and the, and the better players, they're all good at tactics, but so they got to be good at something else because what's going to end up happening is that you're going to go into an end game. So the end game is where most of the pawns and most of the minor pieces are off the board. The queen's probably off the board. And you got either a set of rooks or a couple of bishops. So you got a knight versus a bishop or a bishop, you know, a bishop end game, that type of thing. So when I play chess, I play with the idea of I want a certain type of end game. And... In order to do that, my strategy is I play a certain opening that supposedly gets me to that type of endgame that's in my favor. For me, like most of the time, it doesn't happen because uh, my, my tactics are not that good. They're not the greatest. Or... My opponent's my opponent's tactics are better than mine, so I can't get to the end game that I want. But that's the whole idea: is to have a plan, and the plan really is to play your opening so that you can have an end game that you like. Now, some players. Like to use rooks in the end game.
And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a position. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use a website because it seems like it's got some stuff in here. However, um, it's got a few games, an example <clears throat> of this certain type of position. And... I remember, I think, I don't know, 10 years ago, whenever it was, that there's a actually, for this type of rook position, there's actually a new way of dealing with it, which is the preferred method versus the old standard method of this particular kind of endgame. <clears throat> and if this thing would hold still long enough, I could get it set up here, but I can't seem to... Uh, so I'm gonna set. I gotta set this up. Uh, I gotta move this, don't I? I should move this over. No, I don't need to. I guess. And before I tell you what it is, um, I don't know what this one picture is. <clears throat> so we'll do this. Maybe this is. is weird. I'm looking at something here now. Black ends up with a queen versus rook end game. We don't want, we don't want that. Oh, so they're saying that the, so this is called the Lucina position. Now what's, and it's showing the white king is always on the back rank or close to it. Um, if black is to move in the diagram position, he can prevent the white rook from going to the fourth rank, but then white still wins. <laughs> so it might actually be this one. So let's see if I can put the pieces on the board. Oops. Um, this is gonna be difficult to do here. Not really. <coughs> And a king and a pawn. The king is here. Now you don't see this yet because uh, the other board that I'm using is not visible. <laughs> I'm just checking this. I think this is correct. So I want to say we'll go to OK. And it's flipped backwards. I don't, I want to look at this from, doggone it, position, answer, um, board, I don't use Fritz a lot when I play. I gotta fix this other thing up too. 
I don't know why this is all messed up here. What's wrong with this? Bear with me for just a second. I gotta fix my other computer. Oh, hello? The Uncommon King. <laughs> How you doing? Bear with me for just a second here. I'm trying to... I gotta fix things on my other computer. If I don't, uh, my other computer will crash on me. So it won't take too long. I don't want my computer to crash. And this is just a little messed up here. <coughs> Alright, well, now let me see if I can flip this board. Uh, flipboard. All right, there we go. So this is called the Lochina position, and the situation is that White wants to White to the right. White wants to promote the pawn. Um, If black is to move, he can prevent the white rook from going to the fourth rank, but then white still wins. Rook to a4. What the hell? That's black's move. What is going on here? I gotta move this over. How can black move to rook to a4? Rook to d1. This is taken from from the wiki. What the hell? Rook to d1. <laughs> Wait, is it on this one? What the heck is going on here? To white moves rook to f5. Oh, you know what? The other position might be better to do. I don't know what's wrong with this one. This is screwed up. Let me do. Um, how do I do this? <coughs> Position set up. All right, let's let me do this again here. So the Black King is on G7. Oh my God! I'm really having issues here. We'll get there. <coughs> White rook is on F1. This dude is over here. And then we've got the king is on D8. D8 and the pawn. Is here. Now let me just double check this. Uh, that looks okay. And that looks okay. So this is called the Lucina position. There's two works on a board. How many plans do you have? <laughs> There's only one plan. Right now I'm just going to go over some end game stuff. Um, the plan, like I, I mentioned earlier, you might not have been here. I mentioned that you want to play the opening such that you have a plan for the end game. And so a lot of good players will 
play they've got, they're really good with their tactics so they they win in the middle game with with more pieces and pawns on the board so they don't so they can't so they don't have to play the end game because they're not good at it and there are upper class players that don't know how to play the end game and that's really where the game is the the game of chess is in the end game and knowing how to work with those end game pieces <clears throat> So I'm just showing an example of a certain type of position where it looks like white can win or black can do something to prevent it or whatever the case may be. Um, so this is called Lucina position. It's I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's L-U-C-E-N-A. I call it Lucina. Uh, let's see here. So... Oh, what is going on with this stuff that's in here? So the essential characteristics. The pawn is any pawn except a rook pawn. The pawn has, an, <clears throat> has advanced to the seventh rank. <clears throat> the attacking king, the one with the pawn, is on the queening square of its pawn. The attacking rook cuts off the opposing king from the pawn by at least one file. So as you can see here, the black king cannot come over and do anything. But so if white makes a mistake and that king gets over there, then maybe the king can attack the rook, you know, and it could be you could be under time pressure, there could be a draw, all kinds of stuff. Um, so the defending rook is on the file on the other side of the pawn. A straightforward approach by white such as um, rook to d1 well now it says like I don't know what the heck is going on with this wiki it says rook to d1 check but there is no rook to d1 check king to e7 gets nowhere black simply Harasses the white king with checks, etc. Did I miss something somewhere? Oh, I see. They're talking about um, a previous position in there. All right, so let me just continue. Where the heck am I? All right, so a bridge is what is built. A bridge can also be built on the fifth rank, but it is better to build one on the fourth rank. And now the main line goes white plays rook to f5, which is here. Um, instead of rook f4. Instead of rook to f4. Black plays rook to c1. White plays king to e7. Threatening to promote the pawn. Black can just delay it with checks. So now black can come over. Um, yeah, that's what the white rook is doing, is preventing the black king from coming over. So now we have the situation where black and come over and do these checks and just keep going back and forth so to speak so rook to e1 check white plays king to d6 which is here and then black goes here check and now white plays rook to d5 so you have to look at um, the big square, the queening square. So if if there was an exchange and white is here on with his king on this square where the rook is, um, and it's black to move, white it, white can oppose the black king on the left side of the board and still get a queen. So so black can't trade. He's trying to play for a draw. So this is what's called building a bridge. 
And now we've got, uh, let's see, black plays king to g6, which is here. White plays king to e7, um, which is questioning mark. Better is rook to f8. This, I don't understand this wiki. Wait, where was... This wiki is crazy. King captures f5. And d8, d square, I don't understand that. I don't know what's what the hell is going on here. I can't remember this. So what rook played to d5. It says and the pawn will promote or okay. So if I move back, uh, better is rook to f8. What? I haven't played this shit for so long. Oh my god. What the hell is going on here? I'm trying to read this stupid wiki. I should get this from the book, you know what? This wiki is not... I got some books here. And... I can't show them to you because I don't have the camera. I don't have my camera on. I might be able to find this in one of my books because I wanted to go over the stuff that's in the books here. So the books that I have are Basic Endgame Strategy by Bill Roberty. It's a thin book. doesn't have too much in it. Then we've got... Practical Chess Endings by Irving Chernoff. Um, th those are more intricate setups uh, with a few more pawns on the board, a few more pieces. Uh, certain types of setup uh, setups like connected pawns and that kind of thing. I was going to kind of breeze through that one. Then we have another book that's even more confusing is Secrets of Pawnless Endings by John Nunn and that is all written in uh, a language that's unfamiliar to me <laughs> then we have the last book Reuben Fine Basic Chess Endings and this is a really thick ass book here Um, oh, you know what? I've got it marked, actually. I have it marked. When the Lucina position can be reached, this is the key to all these endings, etc., etc., etc. You get rook versus rook. Let me see here. It was first discovered by Lucina, a Spanish author who wrote towards the end of the 15th century. The solution is so on and so forth to build a bridge, etc., etc., etc. That would be. Where's the figure? The solution is number three zero seven. Let me try this from the. Let me try this from the book. and see if this works because this wiki is just not doing me any justice here I can't figure it out at all I'm gonna reset this position uh, let's see here now I'm using I'm using the book here 
which is a lot easier for me to get to. Oops. Uh, so, we need so the White King goes here. White pawn goes there. Black king is here. And white rook is here. That doesn't need to be there. So we've got this, 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 and this. All right. So here we get the same sort of situation. The the king is behind the pawn that he wants to promote. Um, now this king is blocked from coming over here still. So we've got black rook to rook six. Well, then now they're doing... Oh, God. Rook to rook six. Now is that black or white? That must be... Rook six must be here. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Black doesn't move here. Uh, let me set this up again. Oh, God. Jeez, I didn't think it would be hard, this hard to set this stuff up, you know? King. Uh, let's see. Let's put the pawn. We'll put the pawn here. Put the, uh, the black king goes here. And we'll put the black rook here. Uh, white rook goes here. So on and so forth. All right, so... It says black rook to rook six, and I don't know exactly where that is. So we've got this move. Now, rook, rook to rook six, I think it would be... I would think it would be... What? Well, where is that? I don't know where that is. If it's white rook to rook six, it's down here. But if it's black rook to rook six... I don't know where that is. And then it goes rook to b rook to bishop 4. Now I think the rook goes here. And then this rook goes here. Oh, let me uh I got to go back here and check something really quick. Bear with me, I gotta see if I can fix these words so I can see the words better. Oh, well, that's weird. Huh. That fellow's on uh, you're on you're on both my wait, is that Oh you're 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 seeing me on both channels. That's weird. I'm streaming on chess.com too, by the way. I don't know exactly if that's how that's working or not I just gotta make sure I'm not gonna crash my computer here because I got strange things happening all right so yeah that's funny I'm just looking here I don't know where rook to rook six is for black so now white is building a bridge is an apt description of the winning method so now black plays rook to rook eight which must be down here see this is different terminology here king to queen two You know what? That's black king to queen too. Why would the black king go over here? 
Wait, what happened here? Rook to king four check. <coughs> We've got this. Now we've got king to bishop seven, which is here. The king is opposing. Now we've got rook to bishop eight check. I played that rook earlier in the wrong spot, I think. So now we've got king to knight six. So the king, the white king, is getting in front of this pawn so that the king and the rook can get connected to prevent black from getting in check. <clears throat> That's the whole idea. Um, so now we've got king to knight eight check. And we've got king to, king to bishop six here. Why, I thought, oh. Really, and I just gotta protect the pawn. If Rook, if uh, there's another alternate line, etc., etc., etc. Well, sorry, sorry, no, blah, 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 blah. That's the only move. <coughs> Obviously, it's heading towards the king and protecting the pawn and getting towards the rook. So now, king to knight five. Now the king moves up, and the next check comes over. Whoops, comes over here, and then it goes over here. So now there's another alternative. It seems like they were saying something about maybe the the white rook or, or the black rook goes over to a1 and does the checks from the side or something. I don't know exactly what that is, but that was another idea that was brought up uh, that was a little more complicated or was better for one of the colors, and I honestly don't remember which. If the black rook leaves the rook file, um, then rook to king rook one allows the exit of the white king to king to rook eight or king to rook seven freeing up the pawn. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, of the white king to king rook eight or king rook seven freeing the pawn. If the black king goes to king two and b b three, bishop three, the white king gets to bishop eight with such and such moves as above. Clearly, these lines are not applicable to a rook pawn since there the exit of the white king is blocked. On the one side, he can go uh, by both king and rook. The case of the rook pawn will be dis discussed er later. So the whole idea, like, so this would be a plan. A plan would be if you want, like, you don't want to have a rook pawn in the end game because that's the worst pawn to try to get a queen. So that would be a plan, an example of one. Um, and oh, I guess I'll go ahead and add there. So I just get back to explaining. It's a plan would be to not have a rook pawn in your end game because it's more complicated, not that it can't be done. Um, this way the white king has a chance to go on either side of the board. So that's called building the bridge, moving the white rook to oppose the check so that white can, white can queen. Um, let's see, let's exit the white king to free the pawn. If the black king goes to king two, well, that doesn't make any sense. That leaves the rook. King two, wait, uh, king two, rook takes. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Half of this stuff in here, I, I just, it's, uh, it's kind of complicated. 
if the if the black book lives or let's see Rook to King seven zero, 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 seven. if the black rook goes to king two king two how is that even possible let's look at another position and let's see we're going to have the black rook it's going to be this this is a position that leads to the Lucina position and maybe that's where that alternative move comes in and I might be able to see it uh, I don't know it's been so it's been a long it's like 10 years or more probably 20 for that matter since I've dealt with this nine times out of ten you'll never see this in a chess game nine times out of ten my plan when I play chess is I get rid of the rooks on the board because I don't like rook end games that's one of my little pet peeve secrets where the heck is the uh, the white rook what white plays pawn on the fifth and uh, oh I see it <laughs> I couldn't even see that rook <laughs> oh yes wait that's a king and that's a rook way over there That's a king, and then we gotta grab that and make. Oops. Get rid of that. Grab that. Get rid of that. All right. So I've got that. I got this, and I got that. And I'm gonna do this. All right. So now, no matter what Black does, uh, can't stop New Queen from there. Well, there's a situation, and I couldn't get into the. I couldn't get into the the continuing moves the whole idea is the building of the bridge to prevent your opponent from doing the check so that you can get down there and get the queen but it's it's still it's got some moves in there that it would be helpful to know the rest of that pattern uh, in general if the white pawn is on the fifth and the black king is cut off as we have here white always wins but if the white pawn is on the fourth white always wins only if the black king is kept at a distance of at least three files from the pawn so this would be an example of not pushing your pawns further down the board um, the more squares you push your pawns down to the end of the board the weaker your pawns are so this would be one example of that. Uh, thus, if the pawn is on the queen, I foul, etc., etc., etc. There are, however, a number of cases where white wins, even though the king is much nearer. These occur when there is a distance of two or more ranks between the king and the pawn. Rule number five. If the pawn is on the fifth rank with its king near it and the black king is cut off from the queen file white wins this is illustrated in 308 here it makes no difference who it moves whose move it is the win proceeds as follow king to rook five um i guess white to move so that would be here all right why can't i move this piece I want to do a triangulation here. All right, so I got the same position, but now it's white to move. So, king to rook five. Uh, and we got rook to rook one check for 
what I don't know what this alternative move is. King to knight six. So here's where the king is actually attacking black's rook. Uh, king to rook six. King to rook six. How can he do that? Oh, it must be. It must be from Black's perspective. It must be here. Rook to rook one check. Why would. Oh, I did something wrong. What the hell? King to knight six, rook to knight one check. Oh, it must be here. And now we have king to knight seven. Well, that isn't right either. Jeez, I'm all freaked up here. Did this just, did my computer just, oh, I don't want that. Oh, I hate doing this. I'm not going to use this book, I don't think. I don't like these, uh, I need algebraic to really understand what the heck is going on here. What was the last move? What was that? All right, so rook, king to knight seven, rook to rook seven. And then it says, pawn to knight six. Oh, white is moving towards me, which makes a lot more sense. Wait. Pawn to knight six? How the hell is that possible? I did something wrong. It said king, king to rook six, king to knight seven. Oh, what the heck did I do? Okay, I gotta start this from the beginning. Check. King to knight six. Rook to knight one check. Rook to knight one check. King to rook six. Oh, I see. And then rook to rook one check. So now the king goes down here. So the so this is where the king is attacking the rook, and now the rook has to go to the other side of the board in order to do something. And I'm wondering if this is where they're saying to bring this rook over on this side of the board. To play the checks. And I don't know because I don't see that alternative method here. Uh, king to rook six, rook to knight one check. If king to queen two, pawn to knight six. King to king rook one.
if king to queen two, that's black's move. If king to queen queen two. I don't understand this. Why not just pawn to knight six? Why not just take the rook? Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on there. Honestly, I don't. King to rook, king to knight seven, rook to rook seven, pawn to knight six. Rook from rook to queen knight seven. Rook to rook seven check. What? Rook to queen knight seven. King to rook seven. Here. Rook to rook seven check. King to knight eight. No, 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 no. That's not right. I did a mistake. Is this in the book? This should be. This should be. Rook to queen knight seven. No, this is not right. This is this can't be right. It says, in order for the king to go to. To what the hell? I am so confused. King to knight eight. This isn't building the bridge, but the king is over here. Rook to queen knight seven. Oh, I know what's I know what's going on. This was leading up to the Lucina position. That's the Lucina position. So if I was to back up all the way and we look at this setup. So the idea is that the white king attacks the black rook until the rook comes back to this side of the board. And the black king is cut off by white's rook. So that's that's part that's the idea of part 1 to get into uh to, to get into the Lucina position. So white goes diagonally, attacks the, the rook. And now we've got this set up here. So actually, yeah, white's going back over here. and so on. An exception to this rule with the knight pawn occurs when black has time to oppose rooks. 308A, uh, which is not in the book here. Black queen at king at queen two and other pieces as in 308 is a draw. An exception to this rule with the knight pawn occurs when black has time to oppose rooks. Black king at queen two. Black rook to queen b1. So, in order for me to get 
here, I've got to go one, 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 one. So I go here, 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 and here. So now this is the position. Forget those pre moves. Now black can play rook to queen bishop one. Uh, other pieces as in 308. <sighs> other pieces as in 308. Yeah, I don't understand that. There's a lot of ver there's a there's a bunch of variations. The whole idea behind this thing, I I don't want to get into this anymore because it's getting late. The whole idea is this building the bridge thing, which um, which is. God, I have to go back. No, I have to go back to 308, which is, which is here. And the black works way down at the other end of the board. No, wait a minute. I don't know where it is. can't go into check. What if I did this, this? No, the, the white's rook is not placed correctly. to be a check. Rook to a2. No, I thought this is where this rook goes here. Now what? Actually, what if I went here? Well, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense either. Oh my god, I don't know. <clears throat> don't play Rook End Games. <laughs> that's that's my that's my plan right there. Just stay away from them. Don't play Rook End Games. I don't think it's in this other book. Endings with kings and pawns, drawing on, on the rook file. <coughs> I sort of did give you the idea about building the bridge, but it kind of got lost in the shuffle. <coughs> I wanted to get into the bishops thing, which is in here. I 
Pendings with Kings and Pawn and King and Pawn. What is that page? Thirty-five. I had all this stuff set up in uh, Chessmaster, but I can't get it to work. <laughs> So there's what's called the square of the pawn. If the king is inside the big ass square of the pawn, the opposing king, and then they can get to the queening square in time. There's uh, opposing opposition. <clears throat> That's why you always want to have your king in front. So like. Let's say if we just go, I'll use my own head here. Let's say, uh, I'm gonna set up another position. Say this king is here. Say this king is here. Get rid of that rook, get rid of this rook, get rid of this pawn, put this pawn here. <laughs> And then, uh, let's say it was move it is. <clears throat> so, the plan is, the strategy is to keep the king in front of the pawn. And black's strategy is to oppose white's king. And so what you do is you move up the board until you can get what's called uh, an in-between move. That forces your opponent to make a move such that now you obtain the opposition. And there's two kinds of oppositions. There's straight-on opposition and there's diagonal opposition. I don't know exactly. So like, you wanna have an odd number of squares. So that's an even number of squares, so that means white can take the, well actually, well, I could take the opposition here. Let's see. So if I go here, <coughs> black goes here. Now black is opposing the white king. And the only way to get out of that is if white can move a pawn, which he can, one square. And the idea for black is always to stay in front of the opposing pawn. And I think that might have been a draw. I think that's a draw. If I go here. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, if, if black rook was on A2, I don't know why. Any, yeah, wait, let's just forget about rook and pawn endings. <laughs> <coughs> oh, wait. No, it, because if you move the pawn up, that's a draw. That becomes a draw. Because you have, the idea for black is to always stay in front of the pawn. This is a drawing position. Uh, no matter what you do. Black can oppose, well, actually, yeah, black can oppose the king. You go into check, you know, type of this type of deal. This is called, it's going to end up being a stalemate. I think. I don't know. I can't even remember now. Now it doesn't look like a stalemate, does it? 
What do I know? Hmm. I thought that was a draw back here. See, black got the opposition. Uh, thing is, as to move up if you... Yeah. There's an incoming br ad break in 25 seconds. <laughs> No, that's not correct. That's not correct. That's a that's the wrong move. You stay in front of the pawn. That's the correct move. That's why I made the mistake. Now you oppose the king. Now you have the only move is check. This guy moves here. Now white can do nothing. Stalem. Steal him. <laughs> so I made a mistake back there with the black king. What I did was I moved, instead of moving, um, I moved the king here, which was a mistake. You always want to keep the king in front of that pawn. That's why that's that's why that was a stalemate. Way, 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 way back here. So I think the the problem was in the beginning, the black king is too close. It's within three, three pawns here. Um, maybe... This is the correct play. I made a mistake earlier. So if this guy goes here, so now say black takes this opposition, and then you've got this. You want to have two spaces for that pawn. So I didn't play it right earlier. Opposes here. Now if black plays here, White can just advance the pawn. Uh, if black plays here, see he's pushing. He's pushing the king back. If if black advances the king. I mean, there's a problem there. It's, it's, I don't know exactly how I would play that. Probably just one pawn move. See, that leads, wait, I did it, I made a boo-boo. That leads to a queen. I don't know if I'm doing this right. What if, if black goes here? It's going to go here. And that's a queen. The trick, the trick is, is not to push that pawn so much. 
uh, why not pawn f4, not f2? There's a, there's a big reason for that, and I'll explain it. So, in other words, like you said, instead of moving one square, why not move two squares? Um, it has, I mean, if, I suppose, let's see what happens here. I mean, I, I mean, you could, I guess. You probably could. It's like you, you're using the pawn as bait, really. Well, now I can't do that move. So now the king's going to go in the front. And now the white king gives opposition. I suppose you could have moved two squares. I don't know. And then now it's a win. So there's that end game. That's that's a basic, like everybody's got to know that. And then the other thing is, uh, let's see here. Here's a good position to remember. If white's king is behind his pawn <clears throat> and black's king is blocking the pawn, then black will be able to draw with correct play. We already did that by staying in front of the pawn, etc. Um, if the white king can get in front of his pawn and gain the opposition, then he'll be able to push the black king out of the way and queen his pawn. And we did that. White has to take the opposition. So if I set up... What if it was black's move? So if I set up... Uh, let's see. see new position the the black king black king Let's see it's it's black to move really is that even right i don't think that's Let me let me just triangulate this mess for a minute here. So here, here. Um, I did something wrong. Okay, now if it was black to move, and black takes the opposition here. I think that's a draw. Because what happens if I move one square, the black king just gets in front of the pawn. And that's a draw. Oops, that was a mistake. So there's that business. I want to go into a little bit more complicated stuff. Um, there's passing as a passing pawn, two pawns versus one pawn. Um, I don't want to get into that. I want to get into not all king and pawn endings require grand strategy. Sometimes a quick tactical stroke inside the game if you see it. Here's some examples of the ideas to look for when you find them. They can win apparently drawn or even lost positions. At first glance, this game looks like it might be able to, to be a draw. Pawns are even, and White's king can't force its way through. If White tries such such move, Black keeps the opposition. So far, so how can White win? Amazing as it seems, White can queen a pawn on the king's side without any help from his queen. Okay, so there's a setup where white can pass a pawn. And I'm going to show you this because I'm going to show you another setup after this. 
that prevents white from passing a pawn. So what we're going to do is set, reset this position here. This black king goes here. Uh, the white king goes here. And now we've got pawns uh, here, here, here. Black pawn here, here, and here. And here it says it's white to move. <clears throat> so white can pass a pawn in this setup. It's white to move. So white plays this move. White does not play that move. Um... Let me go back here. Wait, is black to move? I don't know why. Let's try this. So black moves. Well, now I can't do it with black. Um, I'm using Fritz. This is called Fritz 17. And it's, it's what I use to study games because you can do annotation and all kinds of good stuff in it. I used to use Chess Master for things like um, openings. Is this set up correctly? Wait just a minute here. Should be. <coughs> All right, so white plays this move. This looks like it will just lead to an exchange of pawns. H captures F5 to F6. Here. White seems to have given up a couple of pawns. G7 captures F6. Yeah, well, that so that leads to a pass pawn for white. Um, that's how you do that if it was white to move. Now, when I play towards an endgame, I don't move my pawns ahead, and what I would do... Is I'd have a position like let's say if let's say if white's pawns were over here and black has his pawn set up. Oops. Uh, what? Oh God, I screwed it up. Uh, clear the board. Here. Here. Two, three. I don't know if I can do this. So let's say it's black to move. It's not black to move. Uh, white to move. Here. Uh, well, I still can't. This is not what I want. here. Did I do that right? Alright, let's say it's white to move. Black does this. White to move again. Black does this. White to move again. Now, with black's pawns set up the way they are, white cannot create a pass pawn. <coughs> and all black has to do is just sit there and wait. Just leave his pawns there and do whatever he, he wants on the other side of the board. So, you have arena. Well, that's that's a chess engine. I don't know what arena is, but it sounds like a chess engine. Um, Fritz allows you to set up positions. It has annotation and stuff like that that you can write stuff with. 
So let's say white plays here. Whoops. Uh, okay. What? White just played a move. All right. So let's just, let's do this. Um, let's see if white can get to the back rank. Now white's in Zug's wing. So white could go over here. It doesn't matter what white does. It's a draw. So black moves here. Let's see. I wonder if... I wonder... I don't think... Well, it depends on the position. If, 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 if black had his pawn up here, actually... Wait. No, it, does, it doesn't work that way, I don't think. So this goes here. Well, black would be in Sug's wing, wouldn't he? Doesn't matter which way white captures, black just blocks those pawns. Arena is the same as as you say, like stockfish. Yeah, that's an engine. <clears throat> well, here it says white is clearly winning. Um, G captures H6. G6. White is clearly winning. Why does black play g6? That's not what I do. G captures h6. King, this is the chess engine looking at this. White plays king to d6. F5. Shit, what the hell happened here? F5. H5. Yeah, I don't understand this position because that black pawn shouldn't have moved. King to c6. King to e7. Hmm. King to C. How is white mates? King to C4. King to F8. I think, the, I don't know why the thing has got white mates here. King to F8. Seven. White's taking the opposition. King to g8. Why would he play king to g8? King to 
e6, e7, king to e7. White's getting the opposition on that king. Yeah, something's not right here. Something's not right here. That pawn shouldn't have moved. I disagree with... I disagree with something. Something's not right. See, there's... There's the oppositions. No, white's in opposition here. What the hell is going on? Why did black... Okay, black's in Zugzwang. All right, that move right there, that king move, wait. Okay, maybe that's okay. That's diagonal opposition. Um, king to d6. If I go here, this king goes here. I go here, this king goes here. What the hell is going on? I'm looking deeper into this thing here. It's crazy. Give me a break. I still don't like that king move. No, you know what? I don't like this move. What if I played... What if I played this move? Now it's white to move. And black can take the opposition. I don't know, like some of the some of the stuff that the book puts in here, I don't think they uh or not just the book, but the but the computer, you know, the whole idea is you, is this king opposition. There's diagonal opposition, like uh like if this king were to move here, he would have diagonal opposition against the opposing king. So instead of trying to remember this move, that move, and all that other stuff, you 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 remember the, your opposition stuff, and then. <laughs> Good luck from there, because we're going to go on to the next subject here. Kings, knights, and pawns. How to handle the knights. I don't like knight endgames. I try to trade them. So we're going to skip that whole section. Uh, let's see here. Endgames with opposing knights. <clears throat> Win a pawn. This usually happens before the end game is reached. Move the king and knight to the best available position. 
Advance pawns to create a pass pawn. If necessary, exchange pawns to create an avenue into the enemy position. Advance a pass pawn and win the enemy knight. Use your own knight to win the last enemy pawns. Uh, that's like, you know, you could, you could, you could sacrifice uh, a pawn for a knight at some point in life. Black can win white's knight for his pawn on f2, but then what? Now white just has his last pawn against black's lone knight. With the knight left, black cannot win. But what about white? The answer is no. As long as the black's knight can reach critical squares to prevent the pawn from queening, Uh, it becomes a draw. That's why I don't like night games. I hate them. Hate night games. Let's see here. We're going to go to the bishops. I like it to be bishop. There's a bishop versus knight too, which... Now, that's an interesting situation because with bishop versus knight, there's one situation... And that situation is the fact that the knight can go to every square on the board, whereas the opposing bishop can only go on half of the squares of the board of its own color. Which doesn't, it could mean something, it might not mean something. It depends on the queening square. Uh, so you try to plan for a queening square of the same color of, as the bishop, theoretically. <clears throat> the bishop is very different from the knight. <laughs> Unlike the knight, which takes slow, stuttering steps, the bishop sweeps around the board on the diagonals. The long-range power means the bishop doesn't have nearly as much trouble stopping faraway pawns as the knight did. Bishops and knights are also good at blocking pawns. I will just go into that really quickly. You can use rooks to block pawns. Um... Let me, let's see if I move the, this king here. And we'll move the black king uh, maybe here. And we'll put a white rook here. Maybe a black rook. I don't know, there's some stupid place over here. So like in this case, the white's rook is blocking a pawn. But that's not the best piece that you would want to use. You'd want to use like a knight or something like that or a bishop. Uh, let me think of another setup. Uh, let's see, we'll put the king here. Let's put... Let's put um, two pawns here. Let's put this black pawn here, get rid of this black pawn, put this pawn here, let's put another white pawn here, this pawn, this knight goes here, and this knight goes, um, well, there's sort of that type of deal. This goes away, this goes away. <clears throat> so this is an example of well-placed knights because they are protected by pawns. Now, if black wants to block a pawn instead of doing that setup, he would have his knight in a position like this. So now knight, the black knight is blocking the advance of this white pawn. I don't know why that just changed colors. Because it's stupid. It should be black. This one's white. No, that's not right. So, if it were white to move, white could take the black knight. However, 
is better for it's more strategically better to leave the white knight where it's sitting because if the white knight is exchanged it passes another pawn um, getting rid of that other knight that's sitting up there is probably protected by something like a queen or a rook or something like that so if you there's there's two situations there's open board and there's closed board if the board is closed meaning all the pawns are locked up it's better to have knights on the board if the board is open where there's a couple places where there's no pawns it's better to have bishops on the board um, some people purposely play to lock up the board and leave a knight behind and try to exchange off the opponent's knights with the bishops and they'll just get rid of the bishops and get to get rid of the opponent's knights because they know how to play closed boards and I, I'm not very good at that. So I try to play an open board, opening up the pawns with a few exchanges and keeping a good bishop. That's that situation. Um, that's closed versus open boards. Now what do we got here? <clears throat> Um, I will show you a position where bishops block pawns. Let's see. Let's have... Let's have this one here. Let's get rid of this. We'll put a bishop here. Uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, let's put... This one here, an ad break in progress. Oh, that's nice. <coughs> so now if black exchanges here, then white can just recapture and we're all good. But black, a uh, white's bishop on this diagonal is in a good position position to block this pawn and this pawn here. So this pawn can't advance. This pawn can't advance because the bishop controls that whole diagonal. So that's that whole uh, blocking business. I don't know why that knight keeps taking that. Now we have same colored bishops and opposite colored bishops. What time is it? Late. With both sides have one bishop left, there is a key feature in the position that has to be considered. Do the bishops travel on the same square or not? If they're the same color, they're called same color bishops. For the most part, it's much harder to win an ending with opposite colored bishops. The reason is that your opponent has total control over half the squares that are board enabling to set up barriers that can't be crossed. Let's set up a position for this. We've got black king is here, oops, here. White king is here, here. The pawn is here. And the bishop is here, and the bishop is here. All right, now sometimes it depends on whose side it is to move, who has the winning situation. <coughs> For the most part, it's harder to win an ending with opposite colored bishops. So we're going to look at this for a minute. I'm assuming white, the positions is reversed. And I don't know how to reverse the board layout. So if we look at it this way, It's black to move. 
There's a lot of Zugzwang stuff that can happen. Uh, if you notice, white actually has the queening square. So white should be able to win this game. White is ahead by a pawn, and it's a pass pawn on the seventh rank. So evidently, um, the board is actually reversed. Ready to queen. Black's king and bishop couldn't be far farther from the action, yet black has no worries. So in this situation, it's a draw because black has the queening square. Etc. 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 The same color bishops, bishops. It's a different story because now the white bishop can intercept the queening square uh, with a light color bishop, and so on, and that's pretty obvious. But it doesn't talk about um, how to win with bishops of the same. Color. Let's set this one up. Like if this was a light squared bishop, he could just go here, and then now the that queening square is blocked, and so on and so forth. So let's set up another position here. So this goes here. Dark bishop. Dark bishop is here. We have a pawn here. I've got black king. Pawn is here. And another bishop. Pawn is here. So that's the same situation. So why not just white, white? Oh, wait, the king is actually protecting that square. Uh, so they've got to be some opposition somewhere. White's goal is to oppose bishops, forcing black to trade, etc., 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 etc. Here, his problem is to get his own bishop on the diagonal in the first place. With black's king at c6, white can't play bishop to d8 to c7 any longer since black would just take the bishop off. The only way to get his bishop on the crucial diagonal is to get to a7 and then b8. So they're saying to bring this bishop all the way around the corner. Which looks easy enough to do. Bishop from d8 to h4. So that would be, oops, that would be from here to here. All right, so we got a move problem here again. Let's just do yeah, why am I doing that? I gotta make it for a way to move. I'll say the bishop is here. So now the bishop goes here to h four. If black tries to go here, white queens. So black can't go off that diagonal. Because of that, white plans to move, etc., 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 etc. First, white bishop out the diagonal. If black allows this maneuver, he'll just lose, as in the previous example. What is black to do? He has to try to stop the white bishop from getting to a7, since his own bishop is pinned down to guarding b8. He'd better use his king. So the king comes over. Looks okay so far. When he gets to a6, he'll stop the bishop. Bishop to, from h4 to f2 check. Uh, king goes to a6. Mission accomplished. The bishop can't go to a7, etc. Now what? Bishop from f2 to c5. So what this is... This is a zugzwang move. It forces black to make a move while well, he could move his bishop.
This is what's known in the trade as a waiting move <coughs> or like a zig swing type of position. Can't hear you playing any ways nice to meet you. I'm out for some gains on chess.com. You can't hear me? And my microphone is on. Yeah, I know this is working. <coughs> um, Bishop can't go to a7, so now what? We go here. This is a waiting move. Black's king cannot go anywhere without allowing the bishop to enter a7. Black's bishop can't leave the diagonal, so he has to move to another square along the diagonal. It actually doesn't matter which of those squares he picks. White will have the same winning idea in either case. Uh, bishop goes to g3. Now white can win since he is shoehorned the bishop out of the cozy h2 square. Watch and see what difference it makes. Bishop goes to e7. Goes here. Threatening to play bishop d8 and c7. Bishop to d8 and c7. King goes from a to b. Black has to move back to c6 to stop that plan. Bishop plays d8 check. King goes to c6. Now compare this diagram to the one in 57. The bishop is now off the h2 square for some odd reason. Or is is off the h2 square. Only the black bishop, which is nudged from h2 to g3. What is significant? Bishop to h4. Oh, it's, um, he's sacrificing the bishop. So what he's done here is, this is called a, deflect, a deflection. So like if we play this series of moves, White's idea, the plan would be to deflect the bishop off the diagonal. Oh, does that work? Why can't the bishop just move? Oh. The king can't get to the square because it's going to be blocked. If the bishop moves, now bishop to f2 blocks the king and prevents the king from go protecting a7. Is that right? Because the bishop's still on that on that diagonal. Oh, let me see if I can do this without the book. So let's say here, here, the only legitimate move is here. And yeah, see that loses. So the so that whole idea it's a deflection. So that's an idea that those are same colored bishops where you can deflect this other bishop off a diagonal. Same colored bishops. I gotta think about that. So if I play the way I play is I play opposite colored bishops. Uh, let me think about this. I play with the plan of opposite colored bishops. If I played opposite colored bishops, I wouldn't be able to deflect a bishop off a diagonal. If I played, if I played same colored bishops with my pawns on light squares, 
God, that's crazy. <clears throat> Let me see what this says back here again. Take a look. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's not what I want. For the most part, it is much harder to win an ending with opposite colored bishops. Really? I said, I hope you're playing the game at the beginning. Well, so there's an example of why. Also, same color bishops. Yeah. If both diagonals lean to the ski, ski square pair long, the defender is probably okay. Take a look at this position. White on the move, black can draw with good play. White as a center pawn, black gives better chances to draw since the two diagonals leading to the key square are both long enough. And the queening square is not of the color of the bishop. So I don't know, that's sort of irrelevant. In this one, it's the same thing. The white king is in a position now attacking the black bishop. Black can guard the bishop with his king or move it along either diagonal. Only one of these plans will save the game while the other one will lose. Do you see the right idea? Hmm. Let's take a look at this one. So we got the king is on a dark square. Is it and the black bishop is here. And the white pawn is here. The black king is here. And the white bishop is here. Black moves. All right, so one position. Let's see if I got this right. I do. So one idea. I'll disconnect this stupid shit here. We've got the white, white bishop does not have the queening square. Now, if I was to play this game, I would make sure that my passed pawn is on the square of my bishop. So that's that's like one mistake already. The guy says he couldn't hear me. I don't I don't I just find that hard to believe because I can see it right on my thing here. I know I'm setting back a ways. <clears throat> Black needs to do something. I have no idea, really. Well, if he protects the bishop, there's check. The only way he can protect the bishop is move the king. If the bishop puts him in check, then there's an exchange of bishops. And that's going to win for white. So black can't move the king. So it's got to be the bishop. So why not just move the bishop? Uh, now, wait a minute. If I move the bishop out and the pawn goes there, it's a trade. Oh, it leads to a draw. So I figured out the answer, but it doesn't matter where the bishop goes. So... Let's see what it says. The other two plans, the other two plays would lose. Bishop to f5. So I knew it was the bishop and the and one of the plans, uh, etc. Uh, if black guarded with the king, white would win with the skewer. We know about that. If um, and check, etc. If you didn't see this idea, you might want to review the chapter on skewers. We did. I understand that. How about the other try guarding d7 along the shorter diagonal? So in other words, instead of with the king, the 
the shorter diagonal move the king one square move the bishop one square they're saying bishop from d7 to a4 So the long diagonal is like five squares, and the short diagonal is over on this side. So what does white do? Just advance. Um, what was that noise? Just move the pawn on a diagonal. Uh, in this case, white would push his pawn through by playing bishop to f3. f3? So it's this move. Um, and then bishop from f3 to c6, no matter what black does. It doesn't matter. Uh, what about moving the king? If he moves the king and he goes there. Yeah, the pawn is still protected. Only black's actual move. Or the equivalent of bishop to h3 which was that F5 move. What is this move? Black must attack the D7 square along the diagonal where white's king does not control a blocking square. Two blocking squares are C6 and E6. So that would be these ones. Hmm. White's king commands c6. Therefore, black wants to keep attacking d7 along the diagonal leading through e6. This forces white, if he wants to oppose bishops, to get his bishop off d7. But on that square, it actually blocks the pawn, giving black a spare move to reposition the bishop. Bishop goes to e8. White's only idea now is to push the black bishop off this diagonal. King goes to d5. Uh, what? Um, that would be this move. Bishop to d7. Bishop to c2. The square is blocked. <coughs> if bish if the Black bishop goes to the long diagonal. This guy goes here. This guy goes here. It just exchanges, doesn't it? White's going to, therefore, black wants to keep moving until he attacks center. Uh, but on that square, it actually blocks the pawn, giving black a spare move. Bishop to c2. Black is forced off, but he's ready to continue back along the other diagonal. White plays to g4. Black goes to a4. Bishop goes to f3 check. King goes to c5. 
a dark square preventing checks. Now that the black king also guards c6, the black bishop can safely stop the pawn in the shorter diagonal. White can't make any progress, so he agrees to a draw. These are same colored, this is same colored bishops. And we were just doing a same colored bishop before when we were doing that deflection move. So this tells me that if there's a draw option, this is, what did that thing say back here? For the most part, it's much harder to win an end game with opposite colored bishops. Here we have same colored bishops and black is forced to draw. I've seen this before, the short, and, short diagonal, long diagonal thing where these bishops go back and forth, it's crazy as hell. And it's a, it's really talk, you're talking upper level chess players that know this particular end game. If your opponent is paralyzed, position your pieces to their best squares before attempting to do anything decisive. Um, hang on just a second here. They're showing another position, a more complicated end game. White has two parts, this two pawns this time, black only has one. White has passed pawn, but he can't possibly queen it since black's king is unassailably located on the queening square. So black has the control of the queening square. But of course, there's a bishop there. And white can't ever dislodge it because he does not have any means to check the king. Any winning try for white has to involve capturing black's last pawn and trying to queen his f pawn using one of the other pawns as a decoy. So white will try to implement this plan. Um, so that's something I want to look at. These are the same colored bishops. Good Lord. Let's go ahead and do it, because what time is it? It's not too late. Um, let's see here. So we're going to put the black king to the foot of the board. Black king goes here. And we're going to pawn our bishop. Somewhere. And we've got white has a pawn here and then here. And we've got a king that's only in the dark square and the bishop's on the light square. Let me see if that's correct. That goes there. That's there. <coughs> Uh, I got two black kings on the board. And it is white to move. So, black can't, a uh, white can't move the black king. And we've got pawns that are on dark colored squares. And there's a situation where Black cannot attack white's pawns. However, white can attack the black pawn. So the idea is for white to attack the black pawn and exchange the bishop or something. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. White has the luxury of deciding just where he wants his pieces before he tries anything. Notice that white's two pawns are on dark squares. Black bishop can't attack them. White controls squares a7, b7, and c7. Pretty much keeping the king from moving. Uh, the black king is confined. That means that white should be able to position his king and bishop to their ideal squares before he goes after black's pawn. 
That's a, goal, that's a good rule to remember in end games. If your opponent is paralyzed, position your pieces to the best squares before doing anything decisive. White decides to put his king on e5 and then capture the pawn. So we're talking e5 here. Uh, we've got king to c8. Don't ask me why. <sighs> so here's another situation where you don't want to advance that pawn because you'd lose it, you know. Black decides to shovel his king back and forth while white moves his bishop, allowing him to approach the b-pawn. Bishop to g2. A nice move which has a neat tactical point a couple of moves down the road. White freezes black's bishop at g4. Yeah, if it moves off that square, the pawn is gone. So then what? Uh, black goes to b8. Wait, back to b8. White goes to f6. White freezes black's bishop at g4. So the king heads for g5, where it attacks the black bishop. Oh, okay. So white prevented that move, and he's going to attack the pawn and a bishop at the same time. King goes to c8. Uh, king goes to g5. And b8. And now it's white to move. Now we see why white wanted black's bishop to stay on g4. If black captures the white bishop with f captures, white replies with king captures g4, and the ending with just two pawns on the board is an easy win. White's king stops the black pawn on e4. While Black's king has time to stop either one of White's pawns, but it can't stop both. Here you have a typical finish, etc. And Black can't get inside the square of the pawn. So, uh, Black, White plays Bishop to e4. Oh, which is attacking the pawn. Oh, that's a sweet looking picture. Black's only chance is to keep the bishop on the board. Uh, H3. And then we've got the capture. And then we've got bishop to g2. And bishop to h7. h7. This prevents black from stopping his pawn from the E square. Oh yeah, he's moving that pawn down further. <coughs> With bishop h3, white plays bishop from E7 to E4 and keeps the B pawn as well. Right, how is that? This prevents black from stopping his pawn from the E square and bishop to H7. Also, if black tries to stop the pawn on the other diagonal with seven bishop to H3, white plays bishop to E4 to protect both of the pawns. So king goes to b7.
If black can't play bishop to h3 or e4, this is his only reasonable try. Well, now we've got this. We've got this. We've got this. This is the thing, though. White doesn't have the queening square, but he's going to have to use the bishop. Yeah, I don't... Oh, it's going back to that short, long diagonal thing. I'll bet you. Uh, f6, bishop to d5. King to g6. King to c7. King to g7. And bishop to g8. Why did he, why did he play? Wait, uh, king to d7. King to g7. And black has to give way and let the pawn through. How to win with bishops of opposite color. Now I gotta deal with the opposite colored ones and I may have to call it quits. I don't feel so good. Well, I may not feel alright, I just So as mentioned before, endings with one side has a bishop of well it's light square than it's dark. Bishops of opposite colors are much more likely to be drawn. I disagree with that. Bishops of the same color, the reason is that the defending side has a much better chance of establishing an impenetrable blockade. I'll have to go over this section. I might have to do it in another uh, <coughs> I could come back. I just have a drink here. I always need a drink. Because my plan when I play, for some reason, is to play with opposite colored bishops. And I got my own reasonings behind that, you know. The defending side has a much better chance of establishing an impenetrable blockade. So then the opponent's plan with opposite colored bishops is to develop a blockade. Like I was mentioning earlier about bishops and knights being good blockers. White is two pawns ahead, the pawns are connected and passed, and white's pieces seem to be in fine positions, but it's all for naught. Black's blockade cannot be broken. His king sits forever on b6 and just shuttles his bishop between such and such a square. White can't ever push his pawn to c5 without losing it, so he has to agree to a draw. Wow. In this particular situation, White's pawns are on the same color of his bishop. And I wonder if that's relevant. What page is that? So I don't lose it. I'm going to dig into this other donut. Huh. Am, I, am I learning to find out <coughs> that my plan of keeping opposite color bishops on the board is a failure. It was an epic failure. Because my... So I'd end up with a draw instead of being able to win. Not all endings of opposite color are drawn.
Sometimes an advantage of a pawn or two can be pushed through to victory, <coughs> provided the defender cannot set up a blockade. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's look at a few examples, shall we? Let's do that, because I want to learn how to win with opposite colored bishops. Because I think that's where it's at. I'm, I'm telling you, my, my mind is set on opposite colored bishops. You know what I mean? Burn! setting this up as I speak here. <coughs> so I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. Now whose move is it? Black to move? It says white to move. So let me go to the position and move this bishop here. All right, that's the position. It's white to move. So I'm thinking of the pen, the the blockade of the king. Um, my thinking is to move the white king on the white squares to gain the opposition. That's my thinking. Let me see what the book says. White has kept his pawns pressed, which is a good strategy. In that way, the pawns can threaten to advance at the proper time. Right now, it's too soon. Like I said before, it's always too soon to move them pawns. For either pawn to advance, if white plays e6, black plays bishop to d6 with a permanent blockade. <coughs> so if I play e6... That's the dark color, wait, no, that's the light colored pawn, and black can't attack the pawns, but he can block the pawns, prevent them from advancing, and white can't do anything about it. That assumes, that assumes that makes the assumption that the opponent cannot attack your pawns. However, it can blockade the pawns. So now, what is the secret here? If white plays d6, check. Black just sacrifices his bishop for the two pawns, and it becomes a draw. First, white needs to prepare the way for repositioning his king. This is what I was thinking. Let's see what happens here. I was thinking move the king all the way around on these white squares. <coughs> the idea is to come around to c6 to help the pawns advance. If black now attacks the pawn on the dark with uh, etc., 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 blah, 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 white's pawns are pushing through. Uh, with bishop to b2 white plays d6 check king to e8 king from c4 to d5 and white's pawns are pushing through I don't see that really <laughs> So, if he were to go here, now we have a check because the bishop is blocking the light square. <laughs> King goes to e8. King goes to d5. Etc. What is what is black to do? White can't. Can he, he can't do anything. I would say that's a win then. So black plays king to e8. Black doesn't want to go back, but he doesn't have a lot of moves. <coughs> oh, God. D5. 
Okay, from C4 to D5. Now, black can attack the dark squared pawns, but he can't. He would just lose. So why not? He can't move the king up except light squared bishop is guarding that square. See, this is what I like. This is some interesting stuff here. Uh, e6. Oh, king to king moves. King to e8. E6. Bishop to b4. I don't know why. E7. The D pawn shields the E pawn from capture by the black bishop. Bishop goes to D2. Trying to get around the corner again, goes to E6. King is on the light colored squares to keep avoiding check. And bishop goes to g5. And there seems to be a checkmate. A small change in the position of black's bishop can make a big difference. Take a look at this picture. Okay, now we've got. is here the dark bishop is here just I keep putting it on the big board no I got white pawns uh, two squares in front the king here I just wait to move so now the bishops in front of those pawns <coughs> in diagram 65 it's about the same as 64 except we've moved the black bishop from a3 to b8 this small change is enough to turn the position from a win for white into a draw. Why? Because now black's bishop not only guards d6 against the pawn advance, it also attacks the pawn on e5. It's that long dark diagonal from there. If white advances the pawn to e6, black sets up the blockade as before. But if white doesn't advance this pawn, his king has no stay in the area of d4, e4, f4, f5. <laughs> Drawn game. It's white to move. I wonder what, I wonder if Fritz can come up with something. White is slightly better. <laughs> a lot of this stuff, half of these chess games that you play, is based on your opponent's mistakes. And a lot of them happen in the middle game. And that's why I never reach an end game. Well, what if you set up pawns on either side of the board with opposite colored bishops and you overwork the opponent's bishop? <coughs> White plays bishop to f5. 
<clears throat> Bishop to C7. Bishop to G6. Bishop to H3. G6. <laughs> Why not put the bishop in front of the pawns? Oh, it says bishop to e6. We've got a check and a bishop to b8. My thinking, well, actually, right, let's go there. Bishop to c8 or bishop to e4. <laughs> yeah, why not attack that bishop? Bishop to a7 check gives way to head. Bishop captures e5. Oh. Sacrifice. That evens out the game. Yeah, that's difficult. If white is two pawns ahead, <clears throat> but the pawns are disconnected, then white would like the pawns to be as far apart as possible. If the pawns are two files apart or more, there are many winning chances. Okay, so we're just going to leave that because I got I to gotta call it quits, I think. So, opposite color, bishop endgame for winning chances. The pawns have to be at least two files apart. Basic endgame rooms opposite colors. Exchange pawns are possible. Maneuver the king to the side of the board where your opponent is strong. Ways a pass pawn, etc. Blockade pass pawns with the king. Hold pawns on the other side of the board with your bishop. Try to force your opponent's pawns out of squares of the color of his bishop that lets you blockade easily. That's for the defensive section. Of course, the side trying to win wants to prevent all these things. Uh, <clears throat> strategy with a two-point... Yeah, i got to come back to this because... So I've learned about blockades, the opposite color... <laughs> Move the king and bishop to good positions. Advance the pawns to create either two connected pass pawns or two disconnected pawns, preferably two fells apart. Yeah, what page is that? 100. Uh, I gotta call it quits here before I get into trouble.